You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now we're looking at the situation that our students or our children, our compatriots are facing, especially in the UK, as it is said that tuition now has soared up to 60%. Like the last uh, guest said, it may not be because they, they, the tuition has gone up, but because the exchange rate has made it so much so that you are paying up to like 60% uh, more right now. We're do being uh, joined by an education researcher, a doctor in education, and uh, he is Dr. Peter Ogudoro. Good morning and welcome to the program, Dr. Ogudoro. Yeah, good morning. It's my pleasure to join you on the show. Yes. Um, UK is very far. Let's start from home. Education is becoming very expensive. Even before we go to the UK and talk about the fact that it's 60% now, we're seeing in our tertiary institutions uh, the fees are going high, the charges, charges are going higher, and private institutions, even at the secondary school level, the prices, the fees, everything are going really, really high. What does that say to the education system in Nigeria, first of all, before we go to the UK? Well, uh, this um, confirms to us that um, our political leaders don't yet un understand the fact that education is indispensable for accelerated development of our country. They have got no idea uh, regarding the fact that um, it's the bedrock of, of, of development, that everything starts from, 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 from the point of education. All countries that have moved forward, without exception, achieved that first by fixing the education. Because once you get it attended to, then you would have succeeded in developing the human capital you need uh, to fix your polity, to fix your economy, uh, to fix your health, and to attend to every other social ill that is confronting you. That doesn't look like um, something that our politicians have understood. They keep looking at education as a cost rather than a, as an investment. And so long as we continue to think about education in the context of you know, cost rather than an investment, we continue to think that um, citizens should pay for it. So education is a social good, and the government um, should have a responsibility to educate the citizens because that's the only way you can achieve loyalty of, 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 of your citizens. If we have to pay for education the way we are paying for it now, and then our relationship with um, government becomes, uh, with the state, becomes transactional. And you can't ask me after you have, I have suffered to pay uh, through my nose to uh, get some good education, to start um, using what I have learned to, be, to bless my country. That is um, the way it is. Some of us, yes, we understand, no matter what happens, I'm going to continue to bless Nigeria. But um, the average person is not look like it to think the way I'm thinking. Okay, but, you know, educational system already is, is, is suffering. And uh, Nigeria also is struggling with funds and all that. So subsidy is being withdrawn from a lot of things. And education is affected in one way or the other as well. Um, but the people who are at the helm of affairs, like you said, don't seem to understand that it is so important. But even at that... Uh, there's also a possibility that if education is not free, like the people usually say all the time, that it's not for everybody. University education is not for everybody. Some people should be artisans, some people should be this or that. It still places a, a certain class of people above the rest anytime, any day, because they can afford it. What alternatives do we have as the ordinary Nigerians to make sure that our children get an education that is tolerable enough to get them through life comfortably? No, at, at the moment, um, the people who are running your country are not offering you alternatives. Yeah, because um, for you to get an alternative, you first have to go through primary school successfully mm. and then go through um, high, high, you know, high school successfully. Uh, as we speak now, uh, with the removal of um, um, all your subsidy. Uh, even parents are not going to be able to put their children through high school successfully because transportation has gone up and that has compelled uh, most schools across the country to also increase their school fee. And we know that um, uh, as we speak now, it's a 50-50 affair. About 50% 50 of Nigerian um, children are studying in, in private schools. 
And uh, so those, those friends are affected. Many people have lost their jobs. Businesses are struggling. And so parents can't um, uh, procure a uh, good quality education, you know, for their children. And the people who are um, uh, selling the idea of uh, everybody should go and become a technician. They, their own children are, are they technicians? And have they provided the technical schools and um, put in good quality um, teachers in those places? Are they, have they funded and have they put equipment, technology in those places for people to acquire these skills everybody talks about? Why are their own children not going to technical schools? Why are they sending them abroad and preventing ordinary people who are paying through their loans to try to send their children abroad from continuing to do so? So I think that what is, um, we find in our hands is a situation where uh, the elites, the political elites are making a deliberate effort to ensure that, they are, that social migration doesn't happen in our country. And that's why Nigeria has continued to you know, run the way we are running it. So the people, politicians who were there um, uh, 50 years ago, their children have taken over and they are preparing their own children and grandchildren you know, to take over from them. So at the end of the day, um, if you have come from a family that has always struggled, maybe it's very likely that your own generation will even be worse off you know, economically and socially, which is, which is very unfortunate for us. In, in certain countries, um, I just returned from, from, from Finland on a research project and I tell you that um, they have 100% literacy rate and they give everybody access you know, to the best education possible, up to PhD level, you study for free. And uh, in fact, if you are doing PhD, the government pays your salary and buys you computer and everything because they want to say thank you to you for finding time to devote a significant part of your life to doing research to improve society. But here, we mock people who go to school. And so long as we continue to ridicule education and say it's a scam, for that long, we will continue to suffer as a people. You can't fix Nigeria's problem merely by getting politicians to go and be discussing rubbish in Abuja. You have got to train your people to become good quality thinkers. We haven't got good quality thinkers coming out of the school system today. And so I, I, I think that we are in a very dangerous place at the moment. Okay, um, some basic things. In security, uh, people are talking about the fact that we need state police. Uh, in politics, people are talking about the fact that we need independent candidates. In education, would you be advocating homeschooling? Because we don't have that in Nigeria. And I wonder why it would not work in Nigeria, or it's not working in Nigeria at, at this time. Well, um, well, I do not know whether you are absolutely right um, that we don't have homeschooling in Nigeria. It's just that a few elites who understand how to do it are able to do it for their children. Um, I have only two children, uh, both of them, I, at some point I had to withdraw them from the formal school system and I homeschooled them. Both of them are studying in some very good universities abroad now because I was able to educate them myself, probably because I have the skills. So, and some of my friends, you know, at my level are also doing homeschooling for their children. Even when they can afford it, they have also discovered that the, most of the schools here, even when you call them international schools, haven't got good quality teachers to deliver the kind of instruction that will make their children globally competitive. So, uh, so homeschooling is happening. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a living witness to that. I, I homeschooled my two children, you know, through a significant part of their high school and then took them out of this room because what is going on here is not the type of education that makes children, you know, globally competitive. So more of that is going to happen just a few days. In fact, um, some of my friends are, are putting funds together to try to um, run a campaign that will get more parents to understand um, what homeschooling is about and how to do it uh, in a way that will not put you at a disadvantage. So uh, more of that is, is coming and so be, be, be prepared. Many schools are going to suffer because parents are going to withdraw their children from, 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 from both the public and private school sectors. Not just because they can't afford it, but also because um, good quality instruction is not happening in those spaces. But do you think the situation in Nigeria will give a lot of parents that ample opportunity to homeschool their children? Because for you to be able to homeschool your children, it, you will have to have time. And time comes with the fact that maybe one of the spouses is comfort, uh, comfortable enough to take care of the family while you do the teaching. Or the small time that you have, the work that you do, can sustain your family. What about the people who have to wake up 4 o'clock every morning to go to work and come back at 10 just to make ends meet because the situation in the country does not give them the opportunity to stay home. What will they do? Yeah, well, if, if you do the mathematics of homeschooling, you discover that it does make sense to do that, especially for uh, children at kindergarten level uh, and those probably at primary school level. Even at secondary school level, I tell you, if you have the right skills and the right awareness, um, even at high school level, it's cheaper to homeschool your children. Uh, in, in my case, I didn't do it alone. I actually 
hired teachers and trained them and discovered that the money I spent was um, significantly lower than the money I would have spent if I had kept them, you know, in, in a public school space or even in the private school sector. So I think it's because people don't understand how it works. Because the reason why we spend so much money paying school fee is because we are uh, we think that our children have to offer you know 15 subjects to be to be to be useful to be to be knowledgeable most of the things we have, our children have been taught in schools are completely irrelevant nobody needs them in industry when they finish you know high school and get into university so with homeschooling what you, what you you find is that parents select what their children actually need so out of about you know let's say uh, uh, 14 subjects that they're offering in the regular school you just knock out, knock out all the useless things that they are asking your children to cram and reduce everything to about seven subjects, and that saves you money and then makes teaching more engaging, makes your children more, make, make, make your children happier because they'll be learning what they want to learn. As we speak today, Nigeria is in a very difficult situation. Go and ask the average teenager in a secondary school. The teenager will tell you that. Yeah, on a typical day, he's not happy, you know, waking up to go to school because he, he has been taught what he knows have become completely irrelevant in the, in the current, uh, you know, dispensation globally. So we are not preparing them for the world of work. We are just getting them to cram things and pass exams and, and, and A's that uh, nobody is going to ask for. In the world of work today, most employers go and ask HR managers. They, they have stopped asking you for 2, 1 and first class. They are asking you for skills. They are asking you for knowledge. They're asking you for analytical you know, capacity. They're asking you for the ability to solve practical problems. Nobody cares anymore about the quality of your grade. They are caring more about the kind of problems you can solve. And so parents who are doing homeschooling are selecting the things that employers are asking for eventually and preparing their children for that world of work. Because we live in a global environment. You actually don't need certificate anymore to earn money. On the internet, there are many sites that you know, uh, are populated by people who have problems people can solve. And so once you show up there and you can solve those problems, they don't ask you for your degree, they don't ask you for your certificate. They are only asking you for proof that you have been able to solve that kind of problem before. And so if you homeschool your children, you select the kind of thing that will give them those skills and the knowledge and the international you know, network to be able to get to where they should be. And uh, your children will have fun rather than going through motion you know, the schooling that doesn't come with education. And we need to uh, make a deliberate effort to educate parents and other stakeholders in the system to know the difference between schooling and, ed and, 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 and education. What we are doing in Nigeria predominantly is schooling our children. We are not going to putting them through education, which is very unfortunate for us. Okay, but what do you say about the curriculum now, the Nigerian curriculum? Because I had a, um, an experience where I interviewed a school owner and the school owner told me that in her school, she had to uh, have the Nigerian curriculum, the UK curriculum, and the Canadian curriculum. They, she had to have these three because it wasn't enough to just have the Nigerian curriculum. So what do you say about the Nigerian curriculum? Is it good enough for our children, even with the best of teachers using that curriculum, for them to compete in the uh, global scene? No, Nigeria is losing at, at, all, all, at all ends. You know, from all fronts, we, we, are, we, are not, we are not, you know, we are not, we are not doing well at all. And so what you find is that the curriculum is completely out of, out of, out of reality. It's not, it has nothing to do with what the world is asking for today. The curriculum we are using now is a curriculum that um, a country like, um, you know, Finland used maybe in the 1950s. And so we are minimum 50 years behind time. Uh, uh, and so we can use that to um, uh, produce uh, engineers that will give you on in, uh, 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 stable electricity. We can use that to produce doctors who will be able to make uh, uh, you know, uh, accurate diagnosis when you go to hospital. So, um, so you, it's an open secret. We are not doing well in terms of our curriculum. The, the people even formulating your curriculum have no idea what they should be putting in place in terms of what our children should be put through. And then don't also assume that you have great teachers. You haven't got, got great teachers. I run a teacher's community. You know, we have about um, over half a million there. And I tell you that the average teacher still doesn't know what is in the classroom to do. Ask them for the meaning of learning. The average Nigerian teacher can't define that, really. And there's so much, uh, you know, focus on 
on, on the cognitive level of change rather than you know trying to move children towards getting them to acquire skills and they have the right values, acquire analytical ability, have commercial awareness, and, and then learn how to work in teams and, and become very good communicators. All of those things are not being emphasized. Our curriculum is just big on, 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 uh, on what to think rather than how to think. And so long as you have a curriculum that you know, focuses more on what to think rather than on how to think, for that long will you continue to suffer as a country. So Nigeria is not, is not, is not progressing towards um, you know, the, uh, developing the human capital that will enable you to solve all these um, you know, economic challenges that, 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 that are confronting you now. As we speak, I hope you know that Nigeria's per capita income is below $3,000. A country like Norway has, has over $80,000 know, as per capita income, meaning that uh, what a Norwegian earns in a year, Nigeria will spend his entire lifetime. He hasn't earned it, and that's, very, that's, that's scandalous for us, especially in a country where um, life expectancy is also below 60 years. So, uh, we 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 are we are being harassed, you know, uh, on every front, and that that's and that's because the politicians are very selfish. They 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 are managing to find the money from our public treasury to send their own children abroad, and they do not care about the children of of of, of the poor who deserve, you know, to also achieve social migration, get out of poverty. But these people here, they are so you know, protective of what they have accomplished for their families and they do not want other people to come to that space where they are. And that's um, something that all of us who don't seem to have the access to political power should begin to think about how we can accomplish, you know, how we can acquire more political power, insist that Nigeria has become more equitable and, 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 and run a fair and just system. At the moment, we don't have that. Okay, uh, right now, what we really are talking about is the fact that those people who can afford it and have sent their children outside this country and are faced with the fact that the tuition have gone, uh, question, has gone up to 60%. Maybe not because of the fault of the, of the host country, but because of our exchange rate or whatever the reason might be. Do you see this as reducing the number of people who seek education tourism outside the shores of Nigeria? That's, that's, that's automatic. You don't need, you don't need a, a degree from um, you know, um, uh, Harvard University to understand that. Uh, we must underscore the fact that uh, UK universities have not suddenly increased school fees so that nobody gets deceived. Uh, I studied in the UK. I know how the system works. Even if school fees are going to be increased in the UK, it doesn't go beyond 5% annually. They, are, they run a, sense, a, you know, a much thinner society than you, you are running here. So what has happened is that uh, the same school fee that you, you, you were charged by university has remained, you know, what, what they are still asking you to pay. But the money you need to move from Nigeria, you know, to the UK for, for, for you to remain in school um, it has increased. You are now asked, you know, to pay more because of this um, uh, unification of uh, the black market and, and, and the, formal, the formal, you know, CBN rate. So that's exactly what has happened and it's, it's automatic. If you are not able to, you know, find that money and, and get it out of Nigeria into the UK, you definitely have to drop out of school. Many people have already changed their mind because, uh, especially if you are doing PhD, a PhD, you know, for you to enroll in a PhD class in the UK, typical university in the UK, tuition fee would be minimum of, you know, twenty thousand pounds. And if you convert that to naira and add the living expenses, will which will add a minimum of about ten thousand pounds again to it. Convert all of that to naira, and you discover that you need. Uh, over 40 million annually to be to remain in school. And so when people do the mathematics of it, they're asking themselves the question, how many years will it take me to recover the cost of my education in, 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 in any of those countries? And then people drop out. And those who are at home and they're hoping to, they were planning to travel out by next year to go and pursue higher education. They are dropping that ambition. And so we are going to uh, find ourselves in a situation where very smart people who would have left Nigeria to go and you know, pursue legitimately high, good quality education. I'm going to stay here, and there will create problems for, for all of us, really. you find people who would ordinarily not think about crime. But because you have not given them jobs, and you're also not permitting them to go abroad to go and go get good quality education and come back to serve their country, they are all going to use that, you know, capacity to think uh, properly and, 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 and use it to start devising very unproductive and, and devilish, you know, uh, things that can uh, unleash on, on, on the rest of us, uh, which, which I think uh, the government has, hasn't chewed this well. 
You don't, you don't deal with uh, foreign exchange the way you have done with it and then also come back home and say you remove, you remove subsidy on education. Which, uh, well, you keep talking about subsidy removal with respect to uh, petroleum. They have also done it for, for, for education because with FM from September, uh, children are going to pay, especially those in universities, are going to pay higher fees. That is, in fact, universities have already announced higher fees for, for, for the incoming class um, with, uh, starting in September. So on all fronts, Nigerians have been have been have been have been have been tackled and, and very unfairly. And you don't. This is not how to affect change. Change must be done, you know, in a way that makes makes change acceptable, makes change bearable, makes change, you know, um, you know, easy to to, to implement. But uh, unfortunately, the people advising um, our our politicians regarding what they are doing uh, don't even understand what to do, especially as it concerns education. And I I find it very Unacceptable. Okay, uh, having said that, well, let, let's just, just go straight to the point of uh, how to revamp our educational system. Uh, we shouldn't be seeing ASU, for instance, going on strike all the time, asking government to build infrastructure and do X, Y, Z in universities, or to even ask for their own pay and all that. But there's a fundamental rot in the system that needs to be corrected. In your own view as a researcher in education, what are these fundamental things that need to be put in place? Maybe we take advantage of the fact that some people may not go abroad anymore to study, but we need to revamp our educational system so that we can absorb all these people and make our future better because it's the number of people that are educated well, not just cooled, like you said, uh, that will make our country great. So what are these things that we need to do to make our educational system work perfectly for us? Yeah, we, we need to find the community to get all the... Um, stakeholders on the table and, and, learn, and learn from them. Uh, it's, it's a bad idea to think that you can fix Nigeria's education uh, without giving people opportunity to go and study abroad. We don't have enough manpower at the moment to run our higher education system, really, because we need more people who have um, earned PhD in, uh, from good institutions where they have acquired the skills to do research and also have the international network that will enable them to bring in grants, and, you know, funds from different parts of the world to uh, do research and then um, help, help your system. We don't have enough at the moment for every um, four spaces we have that should be occupied by PhD, you know, uh, PhDs in Nigerian universities. You probably don't have even up to two, uh, so you are still short by up to 50%. And you can't fix that by you know, looking in words. You need to send people abroad. As I tell you, that's what Indians have done. Um, I, I was talking with my child, you know, my son, you know, yesterday, who, you know, um, is moving to a business school in the, U, in the U.S. And he told me that 20% of his class are, are coming from India. One country is contributing 20% of, of, of his class, you know, and there's a class in the, in the U.S. And one country, even more, they are even contributing more than, than the home country. Why is India doing that? India recognizes that when you send people abroad, they go and get the best of skills, and then you make um, the conditions at home, you know, favorable for them to come home. And they come home and use what they have learned in America and in Britain and in Canada and Germany to improve their country. So we need to do that. Let's send people, let's give people scholarship to go to Britain, America, Canada, Germany. Uh, societies that truly have better quality education and can give your, your people the skills to, to go and acquire those skills, get M Masters, MPAD, and then come back and go back to Ibado, University of Lagos, Amandu Bello, University of Nigeria, Soka, to stay there and then pay them better. We need to improve the welfare of teachers across all levels. We need to improve, you know, um, their access to, to training services. We are not training our teachers. As I mentioned earlier, the average Nigerian teacher doesn't have the kind of skills we need to run modern classrooms. And so they focus there's too much focus across all levels without exception, including universities. There's too much focus on what to think rather than how to think. And so we need to retrain our teachers and, that, and we need money to do that. But it's not only money because sometimes you give people who run the system money and they put it in their private pocket and thinking that that is their own you know, opportunity to get their fair share of the national cake. So uh, we need to do that. So we need to get a correct philosophy of education. What should we be sending our children to school to do? Are we sending them to school to go and get grades and get certificates? Or we're sending them to school to go and learn, um, you know, acquire the knowledge, the skills, and the right values to become globally competitive and, and get involved in solving local problems? Uh, again, you did mention earlier that there are many schools now, the average private school is, is big 
on running, you know, British curriculum, American curriculum, you know, Canadian curriculum. So we are training our children on how to solve problems of, of, of the West and not on how to solve the problems of, of, of Nigeria. And that's very, you know, problematic. It's not going to take you to where you want to be. So we also need to look at that. Re work on your curriculum and then retrain your teachers and fund better. If we take only 30% of the money we are saving through removal of oil subsidy and then uh, dealing with oil theft, if we move 30% of the money we are saving in those, in those areas into education, we give everybody free education and also make it more functional, deliver high quality education that will make our country find the human capital we need to uh, start you know, uh, uh, progressing towards what everybody desires in terms of development. So these are very simple things to do, uh, but even though they look simple, the, pro the politicians don't understand them. I think that they need help you know, from people who have traded these routes before, and some of us are happy to help. Okay, uh, well, that is where we are going to drop it this morning. Uh, Dr. Peter Ogudoro, uh, thank you so much for being a part of our show today. We'll still consult you, as it were, when we're talking education in subsequent uh, uh, editions of the program. Thank you for being a part of our program today. It has been my pleasure joining you. Have a great day. You too. That was Dr. Peter Ogudoro, education researcher. Uh, he has a PhD in education, talking to us about our educational system. Uh, we, our focus was on the fact that in the UK, the school fees or the tuition fees have gone up 60%, and that is a result of what economic policies we have back here at home. And we do hope that things will get better and our educational system will get even a lot better better. Well, as we wrap up today, let's leave you with this. Your most unhappy customers uh, are your greatest source of learning. That is according to Bill Gates. Your most unhappy customers are your greatest source of learning. Uh, that's how we leave you this morning. And we hope that we'll connect again tomorrow, Friday, which is a weekend. Whatever you do, stay positive. We are going to survive this all together. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. On behalf of the entire crew, saying thank you for being there.